Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, my name is Chris Barr, I'm the instructor of the course. Um, so without further ado, I will introduce the first speaker, speaking for the government, Chelsea Roberts. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so 
you know, people don't know what data is being collected. So no matter what you share, people aren't going to know what data of theirs is truly being collected. They don't know where it's going, and they don't know who it's being sold to. There's no way of knowing. For our second point, that there are no clear laws or legal terms on sharing this private information, um, there are no clear regulations, and it's not fair to the consumer or businesses. Um, businesses talk about how it's a shot in the dark whether you are violating privacy laws or not. They don't know, or this only applies to selling our data. And they have every right to collect your data, but there's nothing that we can do about it. An example of this would be the online dating site OkCupid. This website can collect and sell your data. And the only way that you would have known that they were doing this is by, presumably, if you could find their legal section, um, of the privacy policy, and then going through three pages of terms and conditions, and then you come across what says, you should appreciate that all information submitted on the website might potentially be publicly accessible. <laughs> <laughs> so our point here is there is no clear definition of what is legal and what's not, and there needs to be clear laws in legal terms on the collection and transfer of private data. And finally, for our third point, <laughs> that we need to have stricter international laws on data transfer. All right, now we'll have our first opposition speaker, Diana Dio, who is a transfer student by way of California, as an associate degree in social and behavioral sciences. She is a student government association senator. Uh, and with the Student for Informatics this year, created a student organization uh, called Women in Technology and is currently the vice president of that organization. Um, I remarked after one of the debates, I, I mentioned to her that one of her strengths is her ability to viciously attack people while strangely <laughs> remaining friendly and upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that she will try to rip you to shreds and then apologize. <laughs> to the company. 
company as well. It built up our economy. Also, <laughs> without ads, all these sites that you're using wouldn't be free. Who wants to pay for Facebook? These are free commodities that are there for you to use and they're paid for by the advertisers that you see on those sites. And the benefits really outweigh any negatives there are. Sure, Twitter may collect your data, but Twitter has enabled this sort of democracy. There's so much that the people have gotten involved in with politics that they wouldn't have been able to without these free sites that everyone can use. It gives everyone a voice. Now, my fourth point. More regulation is not the answer. It's the user who has to get smarter. It's the user's responsibility to self-monitor what sites they use, what they're clicking on when they click, agree to these terms and services, and what they share while online. People share far more personal information in one Facebook status than Facebook could ever gather through its terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Pew Research Center, 15% of Americans believe that the freedom of information is something that should be protected. You should be able to share your information with anyone, and that's our right as citizens. Now, to go over some things that my opponents brought up, when they said there was no clear laws on private information, that's not true. What are the terms of service that you agreed to when you signed up for the website? Do you agree? Like yes. Are terms of service laws? Yes. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs>
I'd like to thank each one of you for coming. I'd like to thank Dr. Dar, and I'd like to thank all of you guys watching at home for watching this big video. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to start off uh, with a quote from uh, Mark Zuckerberg, all right? We all know about like the Facebook Mark Zuckerberg that's going on right now. How can you not, right? So uh, Mark Zuckerberg was in, in uh, his trial. He was asked by a congresswoman. She asked, did, did you know, or like, did, did you know, were you aware that your, per, or, uh, your company was selling people's personal information to malicious third parties? And he said, yes. And that's all he had to say. Company, Facebook is selling your personal information to malicious third parties. Okay, well, personal information. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, and I would also like to bring up the fact that we are not fully capitalist. There are laws and regulations that I'm pretty sure we all love. We love the fact that there's not like huge amounts of pollution leaking into our atmosphere, leaking into our waters. <laughs> True, like perfectly true capitalism would never work. And we would just have like so many monopolies that you couldn't even do anything. There would be no such thing as an American dream. And yeah. What does capitalism have to do with the environment? <laughs> capitalism, the thing that we are not a capitalist, and it because we have rules and regulations on what you can and can't do. Okay. okay. <laughs>
<clears throat> and I would like to say um, thank you guys very much because my time's up. <laughs>
Google has a um, thing of 5,000 words. Google does more with your information than most other sites, more like Twitter or anything. They do more with your information because their terms of policy thing is so short. They can leave, there's a lot of loopholes. They can leave a lot of stuff out. So they're using more of your information. So if you see a big terms of policy thing, that's good. That means they are trying to protect your information and they're doing more. Are you having a question? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you read every word in all of the terms of service that we do? I don't know, but I'm also not complaining that they're using my information. <laughs> um, I just want to review some of our points. One, the information being collected is not private. Your phone number is not private. I know you give your information out a lot. You give your phone numbers out to classmates and things. And to say that they're collecting your private information, you're giving it out. When you sign up, you have to sign up. You have to type in your name. You have to type in your email address. You're not typing your credit card in. You're not typing your social security. You're not giving over your firstborn child. You're just giving out your name, number, address, things like that that people already know that are in a phone book that you can look up. So honestly, it's really not private information. Two, uh, you agree. So if you don't read it, that's your fault. You're not going to sign up. You're not going to go get a contract and not read it just because it's paper. Like you're going to, you're going to sign a contract. You're going to need to read all the stuff, and you're going to. You're not just going to blindly sign a contract and be like, all right, there we go. You're going to want to read it. So just because it's on your phone or your tablet doesn't mean it's not important. Doesn't mean you don't need to read it. That's just your own fault. <laughs> uh, three, the organizations, uh, the information being gathered is helping you. When you go on your uh, Facebook, or you go on any social media site, really, you're getting ads that you want. You're looking at the new cars that you like. You're not, like me, I'm not getting cargo shorts on my thing. I'm getting dresses and body pins and makeup and stuff like that. I'm not getting those stupid little ads that I don't want. So it's like actually helping you. Yes. Hey, you what? <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> And for our fifth point, uh, more regulation, like I said, is not the answer. We need to have you guys actually, like, if you don't want to be on that site, don't sign up for it. If you don't want your personal information being given to other companies, then don't sign up for it. It's just as simple as that. And, okay, and so, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and like we said previously, um, if these, if you didn't have the um, ads on your thing, you would have to be paying for it. I know that I'm not going to want to be paying for these social media sites that I have. I like the fact that they're free. I like that I can go on and say whatever I want and that I can read whatever I want that someone else says. And with uh, these, th with getting new laws and things, we're going to end up having to pay for those things. No one wants that. That's what this whole thing is about is like not wanting to pay for things and wanting to do things free. And if you can't regulate yourself and you can't help Put what you put out on the internet, and that's your fault, in my opinion, and that's what I have. <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> and uh, he takes after me. I've heard that he 
showed up one day in navy blue pants and a black dress shirt, not realizing that they clashed. <laughs> social media. It's true that you don't put your social security number on your social media account. But last time I checked, social media is not the only thing that tracks your data, and it's not the only thing that mines your data. There are plenty of other There are plenty of other websites that collect your data, and they do collect very sensitive data, like credit card numbers, passwords, all kinds of things that you do not want people to have. Identity theft is scary, and it can happen. And these securities questions that are supposed to keep you safe, this private information that my opposition would like to play is not important. Well, all those security questions are about your personal life that you would post about on Facebook. So if you can look it up online, if you can have a company that will go ahead and analyze you and put it in an algorithm and be able to spit out, oh, this is your mother's baby name. That's kind of scary, isn't it? I mean, somebody's going to go to the lengths to go through all of my social media and figure out all of this information about me. That's great. That's a lot of effort. These companies make it easy. Yes? Well, you, you said that uh, a lot of the companies are not just social media. So do you not trust your bank with your social security number? Or do you not trust you uh, your ATM card and store to buy stuff? No. That just Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> so here's why. Here's why. Uh, he, he deserves a little bit of explanation. OK, so yeah, it's great. You give your, so, you know, your credit card. You get it from a bank, right? There are certain laws that banks cannot share your private information like your social security number. They can share it with between banks, but banks cannot. But see, the thing is, is like an auto dealership can take your social security number. In fact, they oftentimes do for things like loans. But they are not required to keep your social security number safe. There is no requirement for these companies to keep your information safe. Which means, why would they? Why would they pay the money to keep your information safe? They don't care about you. <laughs> said this is a one-time thing. It's not. Google, the Google Apple scandal, which is basically, Apple said, we're not going to collect your cookies. And Google collected the cookies anyway. They got in trouble for that, but let me go with the numbers. $22.5 million in fines, but that year they made billions in profit. That means nothing to them. It's a risk slap. It's a joke. All right? And I mean, we go to, let's talk about relevant ads. My opposition tried to say, oh, well, we like these ads, these product ads. That's great, but that's not all your information is being used for. It's being used for a lot of things. Like grouping you in a corner and saying you are this. They said that your political alignment is available, like if you, it's just information you get. It's not. My political beliefs are private. If I wish to make them public, I will. But I don't want somebody to know what I believe in without me wanting to tell them. I don't want to be grouped into categories. If an employer in the future can see, oh, he's a liberal. We don't want liberals here. That scares me. I don't want that. And when does the day come when you use your data to get you arrested? Where's the day, the day that comes when they're going to say, oh, we have this algorithm. It's 90% successful. And you match up perfectly for someone who's going to commit crime. Is this now probable cause to get searched? These are things that we have to ask. If there's no laws or regulations now, it's a big concern. This is a big issue. We need laws on it. You can't just trust companies to take care of us, because they're not. It's scary. They're not going to take care of us. They don't care. Yes? So you think we've never put any private information willingly uh, on social media? I mean, OK, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's an interesting question. Private information? Well, yeah, some things we'll consider private. I don't post my social security number on Twitter. <coughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Companies are going to collect your data, and they're going to sell it, and they don't even have to ask for permission. Yeah, social media sites, it's great that they're trying to be proactive. They're trying to be proactive because they don't want to get sued. Because Facebook's getting sued. You don't hear how much Facebook will get fined if they're found guilty in this whole scandal. All right, so in 2015, they made $4 billion, right? That's about $10,958,904.11 in debt. If they get, and this was 2015, they're a growing company. 
<laughs> now, if they get fined, it's $40,000 a day. That's a joke. Even if they find them through the rest of time, $40,000 it doesn't matter. That, that is nothing. That is nothing to them. We need to have these clear regulations so they actually get punished. Without them, the best thing that's going to happen, they're going to mess up, they're going to get sued, and they're going to lose a hundredth of a percent of one percent, which is ridiculous. I want something to be done when I'm being wrong. Enough time to cover the FTC and you know what they would do, but I've 
probably would have 15 minutes to do so. Yes? Did you hear us read off our policy? Oh, you're done? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and they, I believe the first speaker said that, you know, signing up for the stuff, putting your information in is a shot in the dark. But really, I mean, the lights are on. You can see it's a phone. It says your uh, terms and conditions. You can choose not to read through it. We're saying, you know, that's your own fault. If you don't do that, it's there for you to read. If you don't want to take the time, then sorry about your luck. Delete your Facebook if you don't want ads coming up. Uh, I'm going to have two questions. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Do you know confidently what private information is being sold if there's on the internet? Yes. Confidently you know exactly what is being sold? Yes. Where do you find what's being sold? Yes. <laughs> so where do you find? Oh, that's too much. Um, and they're saying things that your personal information is being given away and stuff like that. People can get a hold of it. However, you can pay, if you still want to have these things, you can pay to have the ads gone. You can pay to have your phone number removed from the phone number book or whatever, yellow book, whatever it's called. <laughs> because my family did that when, we were, when I was younger. They kept our phone numbers out of the book for privacy reasons, and they paid a small fee for that just so we could have a phone. So it's not that big of a deal. And if it was, we just wouldn't have a phone. And to go over our main points, First, we said the information being collected and transferred is not private. I mean, you're putting it out there. If you want to post whatever you want to post on Facebook, that's fine, but you're very aware that everyone can see that. I mean, we all know that once something's deleted, it's never really gone. Our second point, user agrees to the terms and conditions of the online organization. So again, I mean, if you're not reading that, that's your own fault. You can't blame organizations for taking your information if you're allowing them to do so. Um, our third point, the information that the organizations gather helps you. Like my team has stated, you want to see things, if you're going to see ads, if you're not going to pay for the ads to be removed, you want to see things that you're going to like. You want to see the cute dresses or you want to see a motorcycle if you're into that. You don't want to see like bitch toys if you're 20. Uh, our fourth point, more regulation is not the answer. It's the user that needs to get smarter. Like we stated several times, it's your own fault. So I just don't really see the argument here. Thank you. All right, so a couple of questions for the opposition. It's been reported that Facebook collects information on non-users how does this not need more regulation? Because those people never sign in. Where's the real? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand the question. The question is, is you're saying that uh, you signed the agreement, so you waived your rights. Mm -hmm. This question says, it has been reported that Facebook collects information from non-users who never signed an agreement and never who has that happened to? Is that proven? In that case, Facebook would be breaking the law and we're talking about the legal sharing of data, so... Okay. Right, another question then. Opposition, you keep saying that the laws currently on the books need to be enforced. Specifically, what other laws are not being enforced that you have questions to enforce? What are the current laws that are not being enforced? That's another question. That's, I mean, that they're not allowed to... Yeah. Obviously, the current laws that are being enforced are the ones that are collecting your information. They're not, supposedly, they are not sharing it or they're not giving it away or whatever, but they are. So, like, the laws that are already in place need to be regulated because they are, clearly aren't, supposedly, and they're being shared. <laughs> Just <don't. laughs> Okay, so... Final two statements. These are closing statements, and they're um, a little bit shorter. Uh, we won't be. They won't be allowed to ask each other questions anymore. This is summarizing the case for each team. We won't have any more questions from the audience either. But thank you for those great questions. Uh, and like I said at the beginning, the opposition gets to go first, and then the government has to close it out. So 
I always tell the students in class, this is where you have to tell us why you win. So we listen to that. They're going to tell you why you should vote for them in this last four minutes, okay? So the first speaker in closing is Elijah Mullen. He's a history political science major. He also wants to be a lawyer. Uh, he didn't give me much to go online. We're seeing a pattern here. They didn't give me much. So I stalked him online and did <laughs> I actually went to IUK's website, which is allowed to use your picture for whatever they are, and I found that you know, uh, he, was, he was inducted into Pi Sigma Alpha, which is the National Political Honor Society, just a few days ago. So,
Kayla is almost a senior in college, she says, almost a senior. She wants to go to graduate school and is also majoring in communication. I did a little research on Kayla also and found that according to Dr. Aaron Doss, Kayla likes deodorant. The explanation for that being that in a social, she knows, in a social media class, they have to follow a, a company for the entire semester and she felt like a company that sells natural deodorant for the entire semester. <laughs> so uh, please welcome Kayla. Transaction of data 
must be lawful with sufficient reason to do so. Companies who transfer data internationally are still responsible for the protection of your data. And finally, I'm going to come up with a quote. <laughs> Chocolates, and if you guys like your chocolates, you should protect them well. <laughs>